If you look at the last six years with government pay raises, you'll see they have not kept up with inflation. It wasn't just this past year, it's the last six years. And this is an issue because the buying power of federal employees is being eroded. Now, some agencies actually try to do something about this. There are different pay scales. Not every agency has to use the GS pay scale. And this is a big issue because it directly impacts the ability of the government to recruit and retain talented individuals. And this is only looking to get worse. We are anticipating like a 5% increase, I think, in 2024. That's what the president is proposing, at least. But inflation, will it be 5%? Will it be greater? It doesn't really matter. At the end of the year, usually what we, we continue to see is that the pay raises are not meeting the level of inflation. So some agencies are actually trying to do something about this. If you look at FAA, for example, they have air traffic controllers. They are not on the GS pay scale which allows them to get paid a lot more. If you look at GS-15, they cap out at 186. If you look at an air traffic controller on their pay ban, they cap out around 220. So it is possible for some agencies to adopt these different pay scales in order to pay their people a little bit more. So you may be thinking, well, everybody's hurting out here. The private sector is hurting out here. And that's true. But the private sector does a better job overall with keeping up with the rate of inflation and their salaries. So what has the private sector been doing? They've been laying off people. If you look at the tech sector, they laid off almost 10% of their force. What's the government reaction to this? We've been trying to scoop up all of their IT specialists, everyone in the tech field. The government actually held an event, held multiple events to entice and attract these IT specialists to come and work for some of our federal agencies. And we also, have started discussions on the SSR, the special salary rate, which will see people in the computer and the IT field, it will see them getting paid higher than other occupations in the government. If these type of hiring events and hiring fairs, if that interests you, check out usajobs.gov, scroll to the bottom, and you will see in there, there's different events. And nowadays, most of them are virtual. A few years ago, most of them were in person, but we're doing virtual events so you can register for free for these events and you can participate, maybe meet a hiring manager, form some sort of relationship, and then you know that could expedite you in getting the interview or getting a job offer, it's something to consider. All right, so inflation, it's not at an all time high anymore, but it's still an issue because at the peak it was at 9% or a little over 9%. Now it's around 6%. But this is only because the Federal Reserve raised interest rates eight times and they're looking to do it even more it'll there will be more interest rate increases because even though that'll take us into a recession more than likely a recession is the lesser of two evils when you're talking about hyperinflation more people are willing to accept a recession than deal with hyperinflation but speaking of the federal reserve they ran a poll not too long ago and it shows that people in order to take a new job to leave their job in to take another job offer, that on average, that salary has to be $3,000 more than it was last year. So say someone's willing to jump for 70,000 or 80,000 last year, now it's 73 or $83,000 before they'll even consider it. So this inflation is dramatically changing the way a lot of workers and job seekers are envisioning the future with their salaries and their jobs and their expectations. And if you think about it, the actual reality of how much you're getting paid, it doesn't necessarily matter as much as what is your buying power? What can you do with that money? Because we've all seen hyperinflation in different countries just decimate their economy. That's why they have pictures of the $1 trillion bill and that bill can't even buy a cup of coffee. What's the point of the number 1 trillion if it doesn't buy you anything? The buying power is what is the most important. Another organization called Finance Buzz, they ran a poll. Over a thousand people, they surveyed them. Only 37% actually felt that their salary was keeping up with the rising rate of inflation. And I would like to meet some of these people because I haven't heard of many companies increasing their salaries 10% or more. We just haven't been hearing about that. Now, sure, there's some companies out there that are very generous when it comes to their salary and benefit programs. So when digging in deeper to the numbers, 
We can see in there that the generation that felt they were the most fairly paid or even overpaid, it was the boomer generation. Another interesting point is that 15% of workers said they left their job because their coworker was making more money than them. So this wouldn't be an issue if you had salary transparency. Like in the government with the GS pay scale, the WG pay scale, everybody pretty much knows what you're making. If you get a government job, it's only within a couple of months where you figure out who's who, right? This person's a GS-13, this person's a GS-12, and you can figure out the math on what they're making. So it's not a huge shock. But in the private sector, a lot of companies still practice that uh, secrecy when it comes to salary and pay. Nobody wants to tell each other how much they make. And I think there's nothing good that comes from that. Now, like what we were talking about earlier, the government has been issuing special pays. And there's more and more discussion about how to increase pay of certain individuals, certain professionals, that it's very difficult to get into the government. Because if you do a side-by-side -side comparison, it's not even gonna be close. And talking about law professionals, lawyers, doctors, engineers, cybersecurity, IT professionals, they're not going to be attracted to government work, despite that we have the pension, right? We have the pension, we have the benefits, great work-life balance. But if you have the ambition to earn $200,000, $300,000 a year or more, then it's, it's going to be really hard for a person with that skill and that talent to join the federal, the public sector, essentially. So the government's going to have to continue to explore different ways to do this because they will continue to hurt when it comes to recruiting and retaining the best and brightest employees. All right, so you could be thinking, what do you mean the government's having a hard time recruiting? I've been applying and nobody's getting back to me. Or if they do get back to you, say they set up an interview, you get rejected from the interview and you don't know why. The hiring process can be very rigid in the federal government. And if you wanna know why that you get rejected from interviews in the government, if you wanna know why, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.